I'm gonna need a dinner reservation for two. John Wick, I'm efficient and lean, a proficient professional killing machine. Hello and welcome to a very special edition of the Leah Valley Would Love podcast. I'm here with Zach Sherwin, who you may know from the YouTube series Epic Rap Battles, but more importantly, he is hosting the Crossword Show at Steel Stacks on Sunday, October 22nd at 6 p.m. We're going to have the link and everything available for you guys to go to the show. We're going to find out why it's so interesting. But first, I want to talk to Zach uh, a little bit about how he, he got into this this realm. You look very comfortable. It looks beautiful I, where you are. I really am. I'm sitting out by a uh, fire pit in an Adirondack chair on Cape Cod. It's very green. There's apparently very- some... There's some goats uh, in a pen that you can kind of see right back here. So uh, after we finish our interview, I got to go say hi to the goats. I would, you know, it's funny. Coincidentally, I fed some sheep yesterday. Really? uh, Yeah. What are the odds? It's it's the fall season. It's time to go to these places. It's it's fun. I love it. It's beautiful. Zach, Mm -hmm. it's so, it's just interesting because I've watched, I I think a lot of people have watched Epic Rap Battles. You know, it's one of those YouTube series that you kind of, no matter what, you came across it in some sense. Can you tell me, how did you even get started in that? What was the genesis of being involved in that? Yeah, for sure. So I started doing comedy in college, and um, we used to go to these like comedy jams at uh, actually the University of Massachusetts. Okay. Um, and uh, I met this guy there, Lloyd Alquist. Uh, he was in another comedy group. So, you know, 10 years go by, he does comedy, I do comedy, we both wind up in LA, you know, pursuing our showbiz dreams. And then, um, you know, he was like, hey man, uh, another friend of mine and I are sort of getting this YouTube series started and like, you should come be in a video and maybe write a little bit. And I had no idea at the time that it was gonna turn into the viral phenomenon that Epic Rap Battles of History did. But um, that was kind of where it started, just from like, goofing around with friends after a uh, college improv comedy festival. So you never know where things are going to, where things are going to kick off and take you on some journeys. And how did you do that? Like for that, did you basically write like, Hey, I have an idea. The one, my favorite, I'm a big Robocop fan. Mm. Uh, so Terminator versus Robocop, probably my mm. favorite epic. I'll probably play a little. George, here. Look what, at you. What did you do? Like, do you write these scripts and then they went and filmed? I mean, it's such a, it looks like such a big production. Like how did it work? Yeah, well, you know, it's a beautiful, they're really, I don't get involved with the like production ends of things. Like they do the shooting and the editing and the music. The place where I really am involved is writing. And that's like a beautiful, you know, team operation. It's very collaborative. We all pitch jokes for both of the characters. Um, You just are trying to make the other people laugh and you're trying to get as many of your lyrics in as you can. So um, yeah, it's really fun. And it's like the best kind of competitive, you know, it just makes everybody be funnier and sharper and try to get the best jokes off. So yeah, it's really good. Um, And then if, you know, I've acted in a bunch of them as well. And so if if you're going to appear in a video, then you get even more latitude for saying like, this is the kind of joke that I'm comfortable and happy saying. And this is the kind of thing that I, uh, I'm not so into that joke. I don't want my guy to say that. Fair enough. Are, are there any that like come to your mind right away that you really enjoyed maybe or enjoyed working on the most? Yes, for sure. I'll cite three of them. Um, okay. The first Epic Rap Battles role I ever had was as um, Albert Einstein versus Stephen Hawking. And um, that was a okay. joy. I'll school you anywhere, MIT to Oxford. Are your fans? Um, it just went so big. I had never been part of anything that viral and it was like so sure. exciting to be, to watch it happen. And then I really liked doing, um, I played Alexander the Great battling against Ivan the Terrible and that was really fun. But now you got the Panhellenist from Pella Helipus, stepping up's foolish as well as useless, little vassal you bitch, let me spell out the list. I brought foes to their knees in Phoenicia. Oh, there's some fellow hotel guests walking by. Well, it, um, it's so quaint, it's great. It's super quaint. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, that was really fun because I got to really go off lyrically more, I think, than in any other rap battle that I've been in. They were like, just go to town, man, write your best rhymes and, you know, have at it. So it was fun to get a lot of rope on that one. And then, um, then the only, I always played nerds and like good guys and, uh, bookish scientists or Egon Spangler from the Ghostbusters, definitely the epic rap battles role that required the least costume and makeup. Um, (laughs) but, uh, 
Um, I played John Wick in a fairly, in one of the more recent battles they've put out, and it was fun to be like an anti-hero for a while. Right. I track rhymes with pencils, then jam them in next, so I'm not vexed by that flex and roid injected pen. Yeah, so I've done a bunch of stuff. I used to be more of a musical comedian, and it was rap stuff, and I've mostly moved away from that for now, although more on that in a second. And then, yeah, I was sort of in a writing and stand-up phase, kind of, and trying to figure out what to do. But honestly, these days, I have as many of my eggs in the crossword show basket as I can get in there. Um, it's just my favorite project. And uh, so, yeah, I'm just like working as hard as I can to get that going and right. do these live shows and put stuff online and, and get it out there. Well, let's talk about that. The crossword show, you know, give me give me an idea of what happens. Yeah. Is it kind of like Wordle? What, what are we doing here? I'm happy to. It was such, I mean... It's it's been awesome to see the boom in word games that has been happening yep. with Wordle and more people doing the crossword mm -hmm. and spelling bee and you know all this stuff. So I, I I'm glad all that's been going on. So basically, the way the crossword show works is this: <clears throat> I work with a different uh, person. I, I am, as of last year, officially a New York Times published crossword puzzle uh, creator. Um, okay. So it's a nice you know, sticker to slap on the NASCAR, but um, yes. <laughs> I don't really make crossword puzzles myself. So for each of the yeah. crossword shows, the one that I'm touring right now and we'll bring to Steel Stacks this Sunday is going to be our sixth. It's actually our sixth show. I work with a different person who makes puzzles for the New York Times and they come up with a grid with words in it. And then I write the clues. The clues work like normal crossword puzzle clues do, but they also are a rhyming rap lyrics. So there is an across clues rap and a down clues rap over the course of the show. And then the way the bulk of the show works is I host a panel of guest comedians and I kind of walk them through the process of solving this customized crossword puzzle. And then every time they get a word right, I do some material, some comedy, some music, some wordplay, some trivia, some audience participation stuff that relates to whatever word they just solved. So, you know, if the word was Pelican, I do some material about Pelicans. And then as the show goes on, it all starts yeah. tying together and connecting. And there's a little bit of like a magic show element to it to watch all the words start to link up in these surprising right. ways. And then um, the grand finale is a, uh, well, you know, I can't talk about that. That's gotta be like a, no, 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 keep it yeah. in your hip pocket. Yeah, yeah. You have to, you have to come to the show. <laughs> exactly. I mean it seems so fun because, you know, I don't know if you talked to me 10 years ago about like a crossword show coming, mm -hmm. I'd be like, that sounds not interesting. <laughs> but this, but honestly, like I know so many people who are currently like into this type of stuff. Is, is it, you know, how do you feel about the phenomenon of people? You, you just mentioned it. Like they're so popular right now. Um, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I hope you have a great crowd. I think you will, but I, yeah. I think just people are coming out to these types of things that they're more, um, it's, it's comedy, but you're, you're kind of involved participation in the crowd and that sort right. of thing. Right. You know? Well, I think that the, um, uh, I think the pandemic set crossword puzzles off for a lot of people. People were looking yeah. for stuff to do. And I just think the world is so fast and, um, intense and our attention is so destroyed that like having something that you can just like focus on for five to 10 to 20 minutes, however much time you have for a crossword puzzle, right. it's like kind of therapeutic a little bit. So I hope our show has some like, you know, um, I just hope it's like a thoughtful kind of kind place to spend an hour and a half while also, you know, laughing a lot and seeing some amazing stuff that you can do with the words in this grid. Um, and I, uh, I sort of feel like we're daring people a little bit to be like watching comedians solve a crossword puzzle that does not sound that interesting or dynamic. And so I really feel like we reward people who take the leap okay. of faith because the show is, I mean, I'd put it up against anything. It's so fun right. and wild. I love it. I love um, to, you have um, some, some people I know, uh, comedians, Glenn Tickle and Roya Hamadani. Who yeah, will be joining you. I'm sure with with another you know slate of guests, but they're they're awesome and local. We have such a a thriving local comedy scene. It, it's great to see professionals like yourself who tour nationally to to come and and join in on that for a little bit. So we're really looking forward to that. That's so, awesome. And Steel Stacks has such a terrific reputation. We were really oh, yeah. excited it's, that it was going to work out touring wise. And yeah, I mean. The, we asked the venue for recommendations of guest solvers to have on our panel. And the first two names they gave us were Glenn and Roya. And I watched some stuff and I was like, that's, oh, look, they're great. oh these people are awesome. They're hilarious. 
No, they're, they're cerebral comedians, if, if I'm using that term correctly. Um, but I think it should have a lot of fun. Zach, I, I know we don't have a lot of time. You're coming down here. You're going to be on your way. We can't wait to have you. So we're looking forward to this. It's the Crossword Show with Zach Sherwin at Steel Stock, Steel Stacks, sorry, on Sunday, October 22nd, 6 to 7.30. Doors are at 5.30. Go to steelstacks.org for tickets, or we have tickets in our show notes or in the link. Um, and you can get out there. Uh, this is great. Thanks for coming on on short notice. I, I, this I, honestly, again, it's just so neat to have spent so much time watching, you know, some of the material that you put out, and then to talk to you. It's just, you know, thank you, George. Well, thanks. The world for is a weird, on. yeah. And um, I had a college touring phase of my career, and I did lots of shows around the Lehigh Valley. So I'll be really right. glad to to get back in the zone. And um, Sweet. the venue we're performing at at Steel Stacks is called the Fowler Blast Furnace Room, which has to be That's the right. most badass name for a venue I've ever performed in. Wait, you've never been there, right? No, I've never no? been. This is my first Wait, time. You're gonna like when you're in that room. Yeah. Behind you is the window that shows you literally the the old uh, Bethlehem Steel. Stack. Wow. Like I, I, I can't, I can't explain it to you until you get there, and you're gonna be like, "Wow, okay." George was it. not kidding. It's really well, good. it's so weird because I've always described my comedy as a blast furnace, so it just kind of <laughs> feels perfect that we're uh, gonna come together in this way. Excellent, Zach. We're looking forward to the crossword show. Thanks so much for taking some time out, and we'll see everybody October twenty second. Steel Stack Valley. Peace.